That's hot. Oh, hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, War Games 18XX. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all. And I seem to be slurring. I'm not drunk. I just burned my tongue on the T, so I apologize. And I just did it again. Something to be said for consistency. All right, today we are busting out uh, the lost or no. Not the, but Lost Ruins of Arnak, designed by Elwin and Min, and published by CGE, or Czech Games Edition. Now, Czech Games Edition did not sponsor the playthrough, but they did provide us with a review copy of the game, so big thanks to them for doing so. If y'all do end up enjoying today's stream, definitely would appreciate y'all. Like, subscribe, hit up Patreon, patreon.com forward slash HCHQ, if that is... You know, if you find this worthy of your support, certainly would appreciate it. All right, so we're going to bust out uh, some Lost Ruins of Arnak. A lot of y'all have asked for this, and I think it's going to be a good time. I don't think it's going to be my favorite ever, but I think it's going to be an enjoyable experience for all of us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of decision points that y'all are going to be able to uh, have input with me, and obviously we're doing a solo game, so it's us versus the AI, and it is us. It is not just Edward versus the AI, so keep that in mind. Also, I noticed when going through a lot of the, there are a plethora of questions about actions in this turn, in turn, or in this game, and difference between turns and rounds. And I've watched, or I at least perused briefly, a couple of videos, including uh, the official one by Paul Grogan over on Gaming Rules. And I really want, this gives me the opportunity to really emphasize a couple of things because there are, seem to be a lot of people that are confused about some of these things. So I want to be able to spell that out. Now, I've only gone through a few turns of this, but I think it's, it's going to be simple enough to where we're going to be able to uh, cruise right through. So I'm looking forward to that. So happy May, everybody. Let's go ahead and get into, if y'all are ready, I'm ready. Hopefully y'all are ready. Let's get into Lost Ruins. Of Arnak. I, I feel compelled to put the in the front of that, but there is no the. It's just Lost Ruins. All right, a couple of things before we get started. The very top of the board up there is cut off. That is intentional. It is the picture in the game, in the, in the rule book, has the board sideways, but I want you all to be able to read everything when at all possible. So when I say the top of the board is cut off, what I mean by that is that. Up there, so instead of having the draw decks up there, I just put them off to the side. So that's the only thing y'all are missing on this, okay? And this way, everything is face up. Now, sort of, that is everything. Because this board over here, this what we're going to call our sideboard, that basically is a place for all the resources that you can see. Uh, I went ahead and just used some of the empty space that's here on the screen to be able to keep some of the resources here, the assistants and the ruins and the guardians and stuff. Normally, that would be right down here at the very bottom. But again, that becomes extraordinarily tall. I'm only 6'2", so more like... More like Pablo Shriver. Tall, not, not, anyway, it's a, it's an inside joke if Jess is watching. Anyway, let's move on. So that's the only stuff that's not on screen, really. And then the other resources that are, I am missing something I just realized. We'll get there in a minute. Anyway, uh, it is that. That was from my earlier messing around with it. There we go. Anyway, the two resources that are not on screen that are all the way off to the edge, those are right here. Those will just be off screen there. All right. So with that said, we are, uh, our task is to lead an expedition to explore the uncharted island of Arnak and discover the secrets of a vanished civilization. You will equip your expedition with useful items, search the jungles for mysterious artifacts, and intriguing 
archaeological sites, struggle to overcome the guardians of those sites, and perhaps most importantly, piece together the fragments of Arnak's ruins into a coherent body of research that could lead you to, to, to the, the, the discovery of the lost temple. ba -da, Right there. All right? All right, and then your expedition's various accomplishments are worth points, which will be added up at the end of the game to determine which player, us, or the rival expedition, the AI, the bot, the whatever, them, boo, has led the most successful expedition. All right, so that's it. That's the overview of what it is we're trying to do. Now, what is it y'all are looking at? Well, we have three different levels of ruins out here. We have the, we're going to call them the level one down here. These are the one, these sites are already discovered. These are printed on the board. All right. And then there are spaces that are blocked off, as you can see here. But for the solo game, all of these are blocked off for more than solo, but less than four. Some of them are blocked off, whatever. You get the idea. Then we're going to call the level two. To, or we'll call these level zero, I think would probably be a better way. These up here, these sites that can be discovered are going to be the level one ruins. These up here are going to be the level two ruins there. Then continuing our way up the board, we have the artifacts that we can purchase here. Then everything to the right of the moon totem right here, everything to the right of that will be items, everything to the left of it will be artifacts. Now, the reason this totem is here is this is going to be the uh, timer of the game. Obviously, there are going to be five rounds in a given game, all right? And then, of course, the three things that are blocked off at the top of the screen are the artifact deck over here. We have the uh, item deck over here, and then the fear deck, ooh, ah. fear deck uh, as well. All right. Then over here on this side of the board is the research track. So think of this kind of as a tech tree. We as players have two different markers. We have a magnifying glass and then our research book. The important thing to know on this is both of these are going to be hopefully moving up this track. The magnifying glass is the only one that can get to the pinnacle level of the research track. And more importantly, the magnifying glass must stay equal to or further up than where the book is. So in other words, they both start here. So I could not move the book as the first level thing because the uh, magnifying glass must either be further ahead or on an equal level to the research book. All right, so there's that. And then this is going to give us some number of rewards, some kind of bonuses, stuff like that, et cetera, et cetera. All right, then moving over to this part, we have different resources. So we have compass and we have gold or money, whatever. Then we have arrowheads and then we have jewels. And we also have tablets, all right, which are off camera as well. We have assistants that we're going to be able to acquire throughout the game. They have a, a regular side, which is going to be the silver side. Then they have an upgraded side, which is going to be on the gold side or the flip side of that. We will only ever be able to acquire a maximum of two assistants in a given game. However, there will be um, points in the game, hopefully, in which they'll be able to flip over to have their better side. All right. Then, as I mentioned, the level one ruins here that can be discovered, those are going to be symbolized by the single lock symbol there. And then the level two will be here, and those have all been shuffled. I'll probably, you know what, while we're here, let's just do this. Just because I'm paranoid you guys think I seed the deck in a certain way. Y'all know I don't, but whatever. I tell you when things are random. But no, these really are. And then we, ha and then last but not least, we have the guardians. So these are the big nasties that hopefully we will be able to defeat, which will protect the ruins after they are discovered out here on the board. All right, so that takes care of all of that stuff. And then over on the right hand side, we have our player boards. Now, you'll notice that there are distinct player boards. There's us, playing yellow, duh. And then there is the rival expedition playing everything that isn't yellow there. Now, on our player board, everybody starts with a symmetric deck 
their deck is going to have two exploration cards. I will get there in a minute. I had already shuffled these, but so be it. So there's going to be two exploration cards. There's going to be two funding cards, and then you will have thrown in two fear cards. Then we're going to shuffle these up and we're going to get started. But very briefly, there is going to be up to three pieces of information on a given card uh, of our starting cards. The fear cards have a travel icon, nothing for a main action here, and then at the end of the game, if you have these left in your deck, they will be worth minus one victory point. Notice there is no victory point track around the outside, around the outside, and the reason for that is everything's going to be tracked on that bad boy. I digress. On our funding, and exploration cards, so our starter cards, only have two pieces of information. They have a travel icon up there in the top left-hand corner, and then they have a free action symbol. Now, normally, whenever you see the lightning bolt, that means an immediate action. In this game, completely suspend that rationale, that, that thought, that uh, uh, I, there's a term that... Uh, it becomes, you know, you just whenever you see this, you know it means this universally. It's not. This just means it's a free action. Get a gold, get a compass. So that is what's available on these given cards. I will talk about the other things on the other cards as we acquire them and good enough there. The rest of the information on our player board, we have two explorers on there, okay? So pretty simple on that. All right, or archaeologist, explorers, synonymous. Okay, we start, because we are going to start as the second player, we start with one gold, we start with one compass. In addition to that, explorer tokens can cover up these victory point spaces as a one-time bonus to be able to do any of those things. And then we have spots for our assistants. Our assistants, you'll notice, they uh, start vertically, and then when they're tapped or used or expended or whatever for a given turn, they will be turned sideways. So that's why the symbols for that. Then over here for our rival. Now our rival, the cool thing about this is you can play any color that you want and you have matching tents and all that cool stuff. On the flip side of all the boards is the rival board. The rival board has different information. First off, we have already seeded the rival deck. And again, we are just going to shuffle these. And I will explain how these are set up uh, there are 10 actions on a given turn that the rival will take. All right, so draw deck, used deck. These are spots for their explorer tokens. When they are unique, when they are not unique, they are worth one less point. So normally they will be worth three points a piece for them. Here they will be worth two points a piece for them. Anytime they defeat a guardian, it will go over here. And anytime they acquire cards, be it uh, items or uh, artifacts, yeah, items or artifacts will go over here. Also, they have a handy-dandy little clock up there, which is the first player marker. In addition to that, they get all the archaeologists that aren't in the player color. So they have six, we have two. Seems a little unfair, seems like they're cheating. Alas, it is what it is. All right, so that's everything you're looking at, except for the player aids, which are down here. Just take my word for it. All right, now... How do you play the game? I am going to briefly go over an overview of this, and then from there, we are just going to get started, as I am want to do, okay? All right, so let's take a look. On our turn, this is specific to the player turn, not the AI. On our turn, and we will forever go second in this game. There's no way for us to go first, because the AI cheats. Not really, but it sounds better that way. On your turn, you may do one of these things listed, one and one only. In addition to that, you may do any number of free actions. I think that's pretty clear. We may dig at a site, we can discover a new site, we can overcome a guardian if available, we can buy an item, we can buy an artifact, we can play a card. However, that may be a free action if it has the lightning bolt symbol. It, which means it wouldn't be a main action, instead it would be a free action. We can research or we can pass. That is it. You do one thing on our turn and then the AI will do one thing, then we will do one thing, then the AI, rinse and repeat there, okay? And we'll cover the setup for the next round as we go along there, all right? 
Now, a couple of things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about how the AI works, and then I really want to drive home one really important thing that seems to really be messing folks up, it seems, when playing this game. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and talk about how the AI works. The AI is set up, there are 10 tiles here. The game takes place over five rounds. Within each round, there is an indeterminate number of turns. One action, one action. Or one turn, one turn. One turn, one turn. One turn, one turn. Continues on and on and on until we have passed and until the AI has gone through all 10 actions. It is possible that the AI cannot do something on their turn, but they still take that turn. So 10 actions for them, and it will be a minimum of two for us, potentially more for us. I'll go into that in detail in a little bit. What's going to happen for the AI is we're gonna flip one of these over, we're going to do whatever it says. Pretty simple, we'll do that 10 times for them. And I will describe how we have seeded their, their, uh, their deck, if you will, of action tiles there. However, on our turn, and this I really want to drive home. On our turn, we can do one of these things. However, we only have two archaeologists, okay? The main things that we're going to be doing on our turns, the main things, okay, are either traveling to and digging at a site that has already been explored, meaning there is already a tile on there, either printed on the board or we will, or if there have already been tiles put out in any of the open 12 spots, okay? All right, so digging at a site requires us to have an archeologist on our board to move over here. So that's gonna be one of the main things that we do. The second main thing that we are going to do is we are going to discover a new site, which is basically taking either a level one or a level two tile and placing it out here on the board and moving a archeologist from our board out there. So in other words, for the most part, I would say 95% of the time, you are only going to be able to dig and or discover a total of two times on a given turn because you have two archaeologists. That's it. There may be some rule breakers that come up with certain cards or certain things that happen. But outside of that, you must have an archaeologist on your board to dig at an existing site or if there's existing sites out here or to discover a site that is not discovered out there, okay? What you cannot do, there is an exception if there are cards that come into play. You cannot take your archeologist from a spot on the board and then go and discover a new site or dig to a new site unless there is a specific thing that says you can do that. That seems to be the most confusing thing to the overwhelming majority of people. So I'm driving that point home, I'm really beating your heads beating you over the head about that, but that seems to be a really, really important thing that people seem to be missing on that. So, dig, discover, okay? Those are the two main actions that you're going to take. The third main action is going to be research. Research is pay some number of costs and then move one of your tokens up these tracks and get stuff. That's going to be the third main action. Everything else is kind of You'll do it on occasion, and then obviously pass when you cannot. You must take an action if you can, and then you may do any number of free actions. All right? All right, I think I beat you all over the head pretty well over that. So, five rounds, alternating turns until I pass, and then when they've gone through 10 actions, they pass. Then we go through set up for a new turn. We'll move the moon stick over. That'll be the second turn. We do that five turns. Then we go into final scoring and then we begin or then we see who won. Okay. So there we go. That's the gist of how you play the game. Now, honestly, past that, I say we just dig in. That work for y'all? Again, I realized that I kind of was a little heavy handed with that. But if you went through the rule questions on BGG, like I did, you would see the same confusion over and over and over. 
And I don't think the rule book was that confusing, but regardless of the why, I just really wanted to drive that point home. Okay, all right? And, oh no, pun absolutely intended dig in. Come on, give me a little credit. Oh, so we have orange pico with a touch of sugar and milk today in that one. And then uh, we just have some basic oolong in the, uh, in the late game one. All right, I'm making burgers for Jess and I tonight. I'm having fries. She wants mashed potatoes, so what mama gets, what mama wants, mama gets, so yeah. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, now, I will step through the first turn. We're going to go very slowly because we are going to step through very slowly each of their tiles uh, as we go along, and then the game will pick up pace starting in the second round, okay? Oh, also, <coughs> and I, let me see, is it on here? It is not. There is a really, really good player aid uh, on BGG. It's a one-page hoo which right here I recommend. I apologize for not being able to give credit, but this is really good for the player stuff. There is not one for the AI. So I will reference the, uh, the rule book for the AI steps. Although, let's face it, it's not terribly difficult. I just want to make sure that I get it right, especially for the first turn. All right, what up, Rocky? All right, ooh, garlic mashed potatoes and steak last night. Excellent, Paul. Recommend roasting the garlic in the head and then squeezing it out when you do the mash. And, mm, anyway, and I use sour cream in there and maybe a little Dijon mustard. Anyway, getting sidetracked, I apologize. All right. Oh, good, okay, Jonathan said this game was bought by many new uh, gamers who aren't used to learning games, so uh, my guess is to the questions, glad it seems to be uh, a bit with newer players, so excellent, awesome. Ooh, cod with some green asparagus and mushrooms, excellent, York, enjoy. All right, enough about that, let's go ahead and get started. Over under on Glory to Rome's two and a half, that seems to be my base number for uh, solo games, and uh, who's going to win, us or them? Uh, so, us or the rival expedition, all right? Yes, the recipes with Edward show, don't, don't get me started. Uh, all right, uh, I am doing a, um, what am I doing? A, a roasted vegetable chowder tomorrow for Jess and I as well. Uh, that, that's it. Christopher, thank you. Uh, the Action Andes Player Aid, that's exactly who it is. Thank you, Christopher. Highly recommend this for players. Uh, doesn't help with the solo, but that's okay. All right. Enjoy the trip, Paul. All right, so the AI begins. And as you saw, these are shuffled. There is no preceding. However, there is a certain makeup of these tiles, and we'll go over that as we go. Now, there are going to be five tiles of the 10 that have this symbol in the top, which is going to be basically to take one of their archeologists and go do whatever it is that's shown at the bottom. Those are in every game. And then there is a difficulty level uh, within each of those, okay? But I digress. So what this tile says is they want to keep us from getting the depicted resource. So we're going to look for a site that provides gold and they're going to place one of their archaeologists and again it does not matter the color all that matters is it's not yellow so therefore it's them okay all right so in other words that it, looking for a site that has gold so if we come over here and we take a look all of these 12 sites haven't been discovered so we don't need to worry about any of those but the ones down here at the bottom as you can see, which ones provide gold? Well, this is the only one that provides gold. So we are going to take one of their assistants. And again, if you're colorblind, the red green here doesn't matter as long as you can tell the difference between them and yellow. So theirs is going to go on there. It's going to block the site and that's it. Pretty simple. If however, let's say there was a gold here and maybe a gold on one of these up there. The first thing that the for a tiebreaker for deciding which they would take is they would go on the higher arc higher hierarchy. So in other words, they would look here first, 
then here, then here, then here for sites that have gold. But as it is, this is the only one. But if there was, say, one here and one there, it would choose this one. But let's say there was one here and one here. How do you choose between them? Well, at that point, you then look at the arrow on here, and is it pointing to the right or the left? Easy enough. It's pointing to the right. It would go on to that one. Pretty simple. But as it is, there's only one. Boom done, their action is complete. They never get resources. Notice there is no spot on their board for resources, but there is for ours. So with that said, and it's worker placement a la action selection, these spots are blocked off, so only one archeologist on each of these, and then as we go up, you'll see as more uh, become available. So their first action is done. And as I said, there are five basic actions with this symbol on it in here, and then there are going to be additional ones as well. All right? All right. So boom, done, they're, they're over. Now, one of the things that I forgot for our turn is as you saw, we have six cards. The first thing that's going to happen is we're going to draw up to a hand of five, or draw until we have a hand of five cards. I want to word that. You don't always drive, draw five because you might have some left over. But as it is, this card will stay right there in our draw deck. These five will then flip over. Now, what I'm going to do, because space on the uh, on screen is, I'm going to, cards that are over here are not, these are our hand cards. So those funding and then a couple of fear. So those are our five cards that are in hand. I'll make that, there we go, okay? Whenever we play cards to our tableau, I'm gonna play them up here, okay? All right, so now, on our turn, we have a choice of what it is we want to do. So let's take a look. We could dig at a site, okay? Dig means just spend the travel cost to go to it and then get some resources, more often than not. And that's probably what we're going to do, but let's go over. Discover a new site is going to require us to, to discover. A level one to discover requires us to spend three compass, or would that be compass I or three compass? I'm not sure which that is. What's the plural for compass? Compasses, compass I, it's a joke. I realize I, it's compasses, but anyway. So we need to discard three compass to move for a level one. However, to go up for a level two requires us to discard six compass. We have one, so we're not gonna discover any sites to be able to begin the game, okay? All right, that makes sense, I hope. Overcome a guardian. There are no guardians right now, so we're going to not even talk about that. Buying an item and buying an artifact. All right. Well, let's take a look at those. So let's go up to the top of the board and take a look at the artifact, which again, artifacts are going to be blue, but they're going to be left of the moon token, and items will be to the right. So now let me get my handy dandy little pointer. Hey, where did, there we go. Thank you, Martin. The cost is shown over here in the bottom left-hand corner. So four compass, three gold, four gold, one gold, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. We have one compass and one gold, so no, 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 no. We can buy this one if we want. <coughs> Good Lord. Sorry about that, y'all. All right. To buy a card, what's going to happen is we purchase it. It goes face down into the bottom of our stack here. So onto the bottom. So it will go there. Any existing cards will go on top. If there are none, it would just go there. It'd be the top and the bottom, whatever. And then whenever we need to draw a card. Now, these have travel symbols up here in the top left-hand corner, as you can see. And note the difference between this and our starting cards. Our starting cards have a lightning bolt, which lightning bolt means a free action. This is going to be to play a card from our hand to do this as our main action when we actually have this card in our hand. That's going to be the difference between a free action, free action being lightning bolt, non-free action, main action is going to be that, non-lightning bolt. So pays any number of compasses, get any number of jewels, pretty simple. All right, the cost to purchase is going to be that, it's going to be worth that at the end of the game. 
pretty simple on that. It's going to work very similar for artifacts, except artifacts, I believe, universally are going to cost a compass. Compass represent the amount of time searching. Money, hey, I bought a sea turtle. Mm, all right, anyway, so, there is a hierarchy also when it comes to travel icons. We'll go into that in the detail, but planes can be used for boats and for cars or Jeeps. Jeeps and boats cannot be used for one another. However, they can be used in lieu of, bo or of uh, boots or foot travel. So we'll go into that more in the detail. But buying a card, either an item or an artifact, is other options that we can take on our turn, but obviously we can only afford to buy that one, the trowel, and honestly, eh, not really that important for us there. The next option is research. We could do or we could pass. We cannot pass, uh, mm, you know what? A moment before I lie to you people, because I don't want to lie to y'all. You can pass, since it is a main action, but you must choose to do that, technically. You can still take free actions after you've passed, but basically you're done for the round. You're probably never going to do that unless you are out of archaeologists. So let's be honest. Researching, we're not going to be able to do quite yet. And the reason we're not going to be able to do that quite yet is we're going to take one of our symbols, which in this case would be our magnifying glass, and we can move, starting to move up the track up here. As you can see, you have to pay the cost at the bottom, a compass and an arrowhead. We have a compass, we don't have an arrowhead. Or we could pay a gem or a jewel. We don't have that either. So we're not gonna research for our first action. Whenever you move the magnifying glass to a given level, you will get wherever you are if you move to this space. I, I said it's kind of like a tech tree. So this one can move to either of those. This one can only move to that. If you're the first to, do, to get there, you immediately take whatever the bonus is, do it whatever it is after you've paid the cost. And then if it's the magnifying glass, you get this. If it's the book, you get that. Pretty simple there. But as it is, we cannot do it. So what are we going to do? We're gonna dig at a site. All right, so digging at a site. These are the only five sites that exist so far. We cannot choose this one because it already has an archeologist and the second spot is already blocked off. Boom, done, easy enough. But now, to be able to dig at a site, step one is you have to pay the travel cost to dig. The travel cost is shown over here in the left-hand side. So up here, you'll notice if there were sites already, it would cost boat or a uh, Jeep. As it is, all of these cost a boot, and we're gonna be able to play a card from our hand to be able to pay the travel cost. After we have done that, we're gonna move one of our archeologists onto that spot, just like what he did, and then you immediately get whatever is shown on those. Get two compass, two uh, tablets, a arrow, or this is discard a card from your hand. When I say discard, Technically, it's play a card to your tableau, i.e. use the card, but without getting any of the benefit, i.e. discard the damn card and get a jewel. Okay, so those are our options. Personally, I like the idea of doing that. So now, let's go ahead and take a look again at our tableau of car, or our hand of cards. These are, let's try that again. Y'all don't need to see the deck. You need to see that much more so. A moment. I'll get this. There we go. I'm happy with that. All right. Our hand of cards have all of these travel icons on them. We must have a boot. Okay. Now, the other thing that I would like to show y'all is this. This hierarchy of travel. As I mentioned earlier, a plane can be subbed in for either of those, and either of those can be subbed in for that, and two gold can always be subbed in for any of those. Okay, since a plane can be subbed in for any of that. Okay, now the reason I point that out is we could use any of these cards as our travel. But you know what? These fear cards suck, but at least they have a boot. So an on foot travel. So we're going to go ahead and play that to our tableau like so. Boom, done. And now we're going to grab one of our archaeologists. We're going to come over here and we immediately get whatever is shown there. 
that is going to be 2 compass i. And that's me being a little bit funny with that. All right. Oh, sorry. It's just one. I apologize. Uh, okay. So when I spoke any number, it's actually only one. So it doesn't have a times one, but it's implied. All right. My bad. Boom. That's our turn. Now, I said that's our turn, but remember, we can take a main action, which was dig at the site, done. However, we still have these three cards in our hand that will allow us, if we so desire, to play those cards as free actions to get whatever is shown, so a compass and gold. Do we want to? Eh, not yet, but we might here shortly. But let's elect not to. We're done. It's the rival's second turn. Okay. Now, I would like to point out, you'll notice I said there are five with these symbols on it, and then there are going to be two with a red bar on it, which are going to be the higher difficulty, and there are going to be three green, which are the lower difficulty. I just chose two out of five because that's what Grogan did in his video, and that seemed like a fine baseline. The more red, the higher the difficulty. So I figure for our first game, we'll go ahead and do two red. So this symbol, this icon right here, says that it is going to, the, the, the AI is going to purchase the highest value, no, or the highest point value uh, item, and the item, because it has a trowel on it, the highest point value item that is out there. And if tied, it will do the one furthest to the left. That makes sense? Okay. All right, so let's go look at the cards. So looking at items, so in other words, not that. So this, 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 this. All right, that one has two points. Boom, it's going to purchase that. What does purchasing look like? Purchasing looks like grabbing this card. It's gonna come over here there. Boom, done. At the end of their turn. Now, the other thing that you can't see because it's a little bit cut off is the item. There's a flow chart. So from the draw deck up here, goes down and then this will slide over. Notice the arrow. Everything will slide over. And then we refill right there. And we got us a tent out there. Boom, done. That's its turn. So you can see these are stupid, simple actions, mechanically, for them, okay? All right, good, good. All right, so it's our turn. What do we want to do? Well, we now have three compass, and we have a gold. We have an access to a fourth compass, and we have access to two more gold, if we want. So we could buy a card up there if we want, but I'm kind of thinking we go digging. Or we could, re ah, see, if we go digging, like to here, we could discard a card after we've traveled to give us a jewel, which then we would allow us to research there, start working our way up the tracks. So I'm going to give us our options. Y'all choose my next action. How's that? Okay. Yes, it is getting intense. Well done, Gusarino. We could dig at another site. We can discover a new site because we have three compass. No. We could buy an item. Eh. We could buy an artifact. No, we can't. Uh, we can technically buy the artifact if we wanted to, uh, but I don't think so. We can't play a card uh, because that's going to be free actions for all of us. We can't research and we're not going to pass. So the question is, do we dig or discover? That's... There you go. If we dig, I, I'm leaning towards, I'm leaning towards probably that one to be able to move our compass or our uh, magnifying glass there. That's if we dig. If we research, we can research any of the, I'm sorry, not research, uh, discover a new site. We could do that with any eight of those. And these will immediately give us a bonus. So get a gold, get a compass. Uh, what's it called? Exile a card, i.e. throw it out of the game. So that's what those symbols are. This one is refresh an assistant. We don't have an assistant yet, so we're not going to worry about that. And getting a tablet is going to be really useful for 
artifacts, but we don't have artifacts yet. So with those two, so I'm thinking probably the compass would be a good one for us. Um, and it'll get us some other benefit. So what do y'all want to do? Get the item card to spend the compass to get the jewel to research? The faster you ditch the campsites, the better the score is going to be. The campsites. Ditching them. What do you mean by that? I agree. See, Kelly says researching early allows you to get a super helpful assistant. I agree with that. All right. Um, I like Arrowhead. You know what? Let's go ahead and do that. So we will go ahead and pay a boot to travel for the Arrowhead. So we will use the other fear card as the travel there. We will then travel over there and we will get us an Arrowhead. Okay. That'll go onto there. That's our main action. I think we're good there. Oh, well, hold on. Y'all, well, it seems the majority want us to discover a new site. I'll back that up. Okay, I'm good with that. All right, we will do what the majority wants. All right, so we're going to discover a site instead. So uh, instead, I say we go ahead and discover this site right here. So let's look at that. Discovering the site will cost us, first off, we need to pay three compass and travel via a boat. So three compass, pretty simple here. One, two, three. Now, let's say I only had two compass. I can, in the middle of an action, use a free action to discard that for a third compass if I wanted. Just letting you know, but as it is, there's the three compass, done. Then we need a boat. We have a boat. So we're gonna play this as the travel, okay? So we now have everything we need for that. So we're gonna move our archeologist there. We then immediately claim this and we get what it says. There's no reason to wait on it that I can think of. So we'll go ahead and get the compass. Flip that over. We got a compass back. All right, before we go any further on this, a moment. Now that we have an idol, this is worth three points at the end of the game, okay? However, at any point in the game, once, well, technically four times we could do it, we can, if we so desire, Move this up here, and obviously we will cover that. We are losing one victory point, because otherwise at the end of the game we get those points that are still visible. But we can cover that, and we can do any one of these things. Draw another card, get those, get that, get that, turn a gold into a jewel. Okay? But as it is, we don't want to do that right now, but there we go, boom, done. Okay? What's up, Krasimir? All right, well, this is how you learn. So here we go. So we are discovering a level one site. We've already paid the cost, so we're gonna grab level one from here. And we immediately get what it shows. That's gonna be an arrowhead and a gold. That seems pretty good. So that's two gold and an arrowhead, okay? Okay, but now that we have discovered that, we now have to put a guardian on top. Hey, Jess, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, the trowel of my... No, that doesn't work, does it? Hi, I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. Hmm. All right, cool. So there's going to be a guardian anytime we discover a new area. So we, are, we shuffled these already. 
Dun, 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 dun. Boom. That is a terrifying looking scorpion. All right. So now let's take a moment and talk about overcoming a guardian. Overcoming a guardian, if you notice right down here at the bottom right here, it says overcome a guardian as a main action. We have already taken a main action here. But as a future main action, if you have an archaeologist on a site with a guardian, you may overcome it as your main action. If you do so, you pay the cost. Discard a card from your hand, pay a compass, and an arrowhead, which wouldn't you know we happen to have. That worked out really well. And then we get to take the guardian tile. And then a once per game. This is going to be worth five points at the end of the game. And then once per game, we're going to be able to use it as a free action to go ahead and draw another card. So, hot damn! That worked out really, really well. All right? All right. So, we have discovered and there's a guardian out there. Boom, done. All right. The game's third action. So, I guess he's getting 50 actions, which is gross. All right. So now, you've now seen three different types. You have the base, which there are five, the uh, easier difficulty, which there are three, and the tougher difficulty, which there are two. And for each of these symbols that are down here, each of them have a harder or easier, okay? So let me give you an example. I feel like I'm doing a really poor job of explaining that. So. So, for the trowel, there's the lower cost, higher cost. For that one, there is the, uh, right there, okay? So you get the idea. So there's always going to be uh, either easier or harder of those. But now you've seen the three different, uh, the base and the harder versus easier difficulty. Hopefully that makes sense, okay? All right. So that symbol now, is overcoming a guardian. If there is a guardian on a site occupied by your rival, there's not. There's just us that's occupying it. Okay? Da-da-da-da-da, uh, do all things. Um, what this means is you don't do it in round five. Okay. So, there is no rival with a guardian. So then we move down to the second part, which is if your rival has no archaeologists on a site with a guardian, checks out. Your rival researches instead, but does not take an assistant from the supply board. Okay. So they are going to research instead. So researching is advancing the rival's magnifying glass to the next row. Now note, the rival doesn't have a book. It only has the magnifying glass over here. So now, it's going to go either to this spot or this spot. Pretty simple, okay? So now, you might be asking yourself, self, which way? Oh, that's right. Use the arrow. So, boop, it goes there. They don't get gold. Done. This is going to signify how many points you get at the end of the game based on where your level is, but as it is. Okay? That makes sense? Oh, and there is one more thing. Um, if there was a research tile on that space, we would just discard it out of the game, but there's not down here. In addition to that, take the topmost assistant from the highest stack on the supply board. If the stacks are tied, da 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 But it says you do not do that if uh, you're doing it in lieu of a guardian. So, boom, done. That's it for the AI, for the rival. Cool? Cool. It does not block me from going there. I could still go there uh, if I want. All right, so the AI's turn is done. It's our turn. All right, well, we have these three cards. And you know what? I, I say we go ahead and overcome uh, the guardian. Now, one thing I did not mention. If we have an assistant where there is a guardian, at the end of the turn, we're going to gain a fear card. That's bad. It's just 
a negative one point. I mean, it helps with the boot travel, just not a card we want. So I think it'd behoove us to go ahead and overcome the guardian in that case. So let's go ahead and do it. I've already gone through the steps. Do we have somebody there? We do. We will discard a card. We will discard a compass, discard an arrow. Arrow, compass, boom, done. Now, what card? I say we discard the fear card. Okay, done. So we have overcome the Scorpion King. The rock was way easier than I thought he would be. So there we go. We're gonna keep it on the face up side because until we use this, if we use it, we flip over and it just shows that it's five points. So it's five points either way, but there we go. And we'll put that right there. You know what? Let's buy us some extra room. How about we do this? And now I'm going to have to completely redo all of my camera placement, but that's okay. So anything below the AI's board is going to be ours. So a moment while I adjust that. Done. Okay, cool. Do you smell it? Well done, Paul. All right, cool. So we're done with our turn. We have overcome. Now, we do have these cards. If we want to use them, eh, well, I think we can hold on. So it's now the AI's turn. So you can see that this is, this is a pretty, pretty quick little hoo-yah. All right. So, the AI wants to go where there are compasses to try and provide, uh, prevent me. Oh, would you looky here? That is the only spot that is available. Well, that spot's not available to the AI, and obviously it's worker placement, so the AI does nothing. All right, cool. Boom, done. That works out. That'll do, pig. That'll do. So, it's our turn now. Again. AI, super quick, right? So what do we have? We have no archeologists left on our board. We cannot dig at a site. We cannot discover. There are no guardians to overcome. We can, we can. We do not have any cards to play. Theoretically, we can research or we could pass. So those are our options. So what do we have? We have three gold, potentially, and one compass. Well, looking up here, three gold. We could purchase a sea turtle, because who doesn't want a sea turtle? Uh, we could research. No, we cannot. I lied. I lied. I lied. We were going to be able to do this, but we had to pay our arrow and our compass to defeat the guardian. So that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So what would the sea turtle give us? Well, it would give us two travel boats. That's good and allow us to draw a card. So this would be as an action, we could draw a card and then this is uh, play a research. So basically draw a card and then if we have a research on our board, sorry, an archeologist on our board, we could have a discount of one boat to be able to dig or discover. That's kind of awesome. That's actually not a terrible idea. I kind of like that, uh, that sea turtle. The other option is we could grab the army knife. The army knife gives us a, what is that? Is that, that's a Jeep and a boat. And we could do two of these. Exile a card, i.e. discard it permanently from the game, get a gold, get a compass, get a, get a tablet. Huh. Um. And you know what? Fair point to the peanut gallery. If we so desire, we could research. We need a compass and an arrowhead. Well, we have a compass and we could put the idol up here to cover up the one point to give us an arrowhead to do that. I don't know if we really want to do that. Ah, What do y'all want to do? Okay, the entire peanut gallery is 
pointing that out to me. Um, okay. Sophocles says uh, the army knife. And uh, Paul says the army knife. And Corey says the army knife. Kelly likes the sea turtle. For what it's worth, Kelly, I too like the, the sea turtle. Okay. Um, I, the drawing a card, because that's potentially an extra action. <sighs> but having the army knife to be able to exile fear cards is kind of sexy too. Um, <laughs> that's funny, Rocky. Um, personally, I, I think the army knife probably makes more sense. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to pay the two gold. We're going to use this as an anytime action, or a free action, sorry, for a third gold. And army knife it is. And to be clear, I mentioned that the army knife goes to the bottom of our deck, which there's only one card there, but it goes to the bottom. Boom, done. Now, our next turn, what could we do for our next turn? We still could research next turn if we want, because we still have the compass. We could do this for the arrowhead. That might not be a terrible idea, because we could keep this card in our hand. We could discard it, play it, but discard it if we want. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think, we, I think we hold off on that, all right? The sea turtle is going to go away. That's a fair point because this is going to move over. But I digress. Our decision's been made. Boom, done. AI's turn. Okay. All right. Going to try and take tablet spot. Tablet spot is going to be there. Boom, done. Okay. Our turn. Um, so the question is, we could either just get the compass or... Do we go ahead and spend that for the arrowhead to go ahead and start our research? Those are our two options because if you take a look at our cannot, 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 because we don't have enough uh, uh, resources, we cannot. So our options are research or pass. There we go. Oh, yes, and I should have refilled that right away. Thank you. And let's go over what that is. I guess technically we could purchase a card because there is a single gold here, which we then could get a gold and a compass there. So I should be clear about that. We could get a flask, exile this card, i.e. tear it up, throw it, not really, just discard it out of the game and draw three cards it's for two. Um, let me try and fix that. No, that didn't really help. Mm, that little glare on that. Sorry about that, y'all. All right, there we go. All right. And by the way, you refill at the end of your turn. A turn is action, action. So the main action, main action, that's a turn. When you're done, you always refill it. So everybody will always have a choice of a full tabla or a full market, if you will, of cards. Okay? All right. So new party says research. Beethoven says research. Gusarino says research. Hell, screw it. Let's research. All right, y'all. So here we go. So for our turn, we're going to research. Now, we can do this in any order. We could do a free action at any point, but we'll go ahead. We'll spend that. We'll move that up. That's going to get us the arrow. How did I... There. All right. There we go. And then moving on over here, we must use our magnifying glass. Our magnifying glass will go into this location because we paid the... Uh, compass and that and then we immediately get what's shown so we get a gold yay all right so our next turn we're gonna have to pass because that's it all right okay all right so AI turn 
So we're basically done for the rest. Of, so we're just going to kind of churn through what it is that uh, we're just going to do AI turns from here out. And there are uh, five of them. All right. They're going to purchase the cheapest artifact. Currently, there is one artifact available for purchase, and that is the Trader Scales right here. So this is just going to go into their tableau. It's worth two points for them. That's basically what that means. And we will refill immediately. Ooh, it's a stone jar. Ooh. Now, one thing I want to point out for the artifacts. The artifact has that tablet symbol right there. So to be able to play this as a main action, play this card, you must spend a tablet to be able to do whatever is in there. And then to purchase it, remember, is that cost. So easy enough. Boom. Done. All right. So we have done that. Now, technically, it's our turn. We pass. We're done. All right. Although, although we could, if we want, use this. I elect not to. I'm just saying we could to draw another card. But anyway. All right. So let me get this down correct. What's up, Drew? All right. So this one is going to be discovering a new site. So you can see, depending on what round it is, what's going to happen. So a level one or a level two. So it's obviously going to be a level one, okay? And then it's always going to be on the bottom row, if at all possible. And then we're going to use the arrow to determine which edge we're going to go. So bottom row, if possible, far right edge, and it's going to have a guardian on it as it shows, okay? And then in round five, it does nothing because it's blank. All right, that's pretty simple. So we come over here. It's going to be bottom row of the level ones, the far right edge per that. So it's going to be this spot. He is going to take this tile. So this tile, then we're going to look at the top of his board. Is there a tile, an a, 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 a idle tile, that is already on that spot that matches that symbol? The answer is no, so it will go right there. If there was already one there, it would go face down and go right here and it'd be worth two points because three minus one, it'd be worth two points at the end of the game. Okay, easy enough. So that's done. We're going to grab the top one. It is going to go right here. And I technically it doesn't matter right now just because we are out of archaeologists, but we do put an archaeologist uh, of the rival on there, so there. They would normally get those things, but again, they don't get resources, they don't get that stuff. But it does come with a guardian, so we will grab the top guardian, that will go right there, and that is a big-ass bat. Looks like a big-ass bat. So it requires, to defeat it, a lot of travel, so to be able to get up to its lair, it's probably up in the mountains, that makes sense, and we have to shoot it down. Here we go. Okay. All right. I guess we could buy the trowel, couldn't we? I mean, one gold. Yeah, we probably should have. So, all right, fine. I'll spend the one gold as an action. We'll buy the trowel. That goes to the bottom of our deck. There we go. These will slide over. It's a fair point. It's a fair point, Daniel. Good call. Yeah, and, and to be clear here real quick, when you purchase the artifact, okay, for free, when you purchase it, you get to do whatever that is for free. And by for free, I mean you paid the compass cost. But on subsequent turns, when you draw it back into your hand, you have to pay the tablet cost. So to be clear on that. Ah, oh, donkey! Everybody like parfait. All right, two draws, and that's four gold for those scoring at home. Okay. And by the way, I'm wearing a sweater because mosquitoes. I thought it was thematic. I'm not kidding. Thought went into that. Maybe it shouldn't have, but it did. All right, here we go. All right, cover up a jewel spot. That will go right there, done. We're passing, we've already passed. Once you've passed, you're done. 
Okay, that will go there. This is kind of semantics, but again, I'm walking through it to be clear. All right, so this one is the harder level of the two. This one is for researching. This says, advance the magnifying glass to the next row. Okay, and then the arrow based on left or right. Now notice there is no arrow here, okay? So what we do is we take the bottom tile, flip it over, up to the right side. Okay, so we go over here. The rival will go right there to the right side. This is out of the game permanently. You are the weakest link, goodbye. Done. And then, I lost my spot, sorry. Take the topmost assistant from the highest stack on the supply board. If, stat, if they're tied, use the arrow. The arrow is to the right. Now we come over to the assistants. So a moment while we take a look at those, okay? So the far right, you know what? Let's do that, that's a little bit better. There we go. So the far right assistant will go away. This one is going to be removed from the game. So what the assistant says is whenever uh, we want as a free action, we could have spent a boot travel to be able to gain an arrow. All right. Whereas the flip side of it, you can see on the back side there is you just as an anytime action, just get an arrow. That's awesome because those reset at the end of a round. That's really, really nice. Okay. So that is out of the game. And those are the assistants that are available. I think they're pretty self-explanatory as to what it is. Buying an item costs one less compass or, oops, buying an item or artifact costs one less of whatever it is or two less on the flip side. This is exile a, tie, a card as a free action. This is obviously only enhances. It's not a free action whenever you take that action. And then on the other side, exile and get a compass. Here, get a compass or travel as a anytime action. Now, uh, as a free action, the travel icon is whenever you take the travel action, this will give you, that will pay for a boat, obviously. And then the flip side is as you see there. Okay? All right, good. So, done. Is there anything else? No. Okay. And that is to remove an assistant, right? So we moved up the research, removed an assistant. Um, I misspoke. I apologize. The middle card is uh, have a card viciously torn to shreds by a pug. You're right. So there we go. Trying to be clear, trying to be precise as a fair point. Thank you, Christopher. Okay. The final action is cover a money spot. Everything's taken there. Everything's taken there. They do nothing. Boom. That's it. That is the end of a round. That is one fifth of the way through the game. Mostly. But now we have to set up for the next round. So here we go. Reset your board. Return. Uh, okay, so the first one is return your archaeologist. If you have any archaeologist where there is an, a guardian, you gain, <laughs> air quotes, gain a fear. Okay, so let's start with that. So this comes back, that comes back, and this just in. These will come back to you. -hoo. You know, watching this live, I bet you all are enjoying this. After the fact, I wonder if the jokes still hold up. I don't know. Shuffle, all, okay, this is an important thing. Shuffle all the cards in your play area, i.e. your discards. Then put them at the bottom of your deck. And then refresh your assistance. The reason this matters, this is the only time you actually shuffle. So these cards will now be shuffled. And these will go to the bottom of your deck. 
Any card you keep in your hand, you can choose to keep in your hand, so be it. But you don't ever shuffle that. That's, that's it's maybe a, a, a subtle distinction, but it is. If we had any used assistance, they would untap, but we don't. Exile the two cards next to the moon staff. Move the moon staff and then refill the card row. Okay, pretty simple. So, these two are adjacent to the moon staff. So that one, that's just going to go to the bottom of the disc. We're never going to make it through the entire deck. Same with that one. A moment. And this is since nails aren't cool. Really? Oy vey. All right, there we go. Good enough. That will go over here. And then move the moon staff. Now, what does that mean? Everything to the left is an artifact. So, there first, ceremonial rattle, untaps an assistant, and a guiding stone. Reveal the top tile of the level one sites, activate it, then put it at the bottom of the stack. That's kind of cool. All right. Dig it. All right. So we are done with advanced. So now you know that we are in the second, starting the second round, as it were, or getting ready for. Oh, I hit the wrong one. Sorry. There we go. Uh, pass the starting player to the marker to the left. Nope. We're always second. And draw up to five cards. And then begin anew. Obviously, we need to shuffle this. Uh, so we're going to draw five. One, two, three, four, five. We know what the top two cards are because those were from last turn. And let me double check. I want to make sure I didn't lie. Yeah, shuffle it. Okay. Okay, good. Easy enough. Pretty damn simple. We are now 20% of the way through the game, arguably. You know what? That's actually a really good point. I will fix that a moment. That is a really good point, uh, Temujin. All right, so shuffled enough. Hey, you know what? No, let's. All right, that is legitimately shuffled. The important thing on the shuffling is the darker ends you can see here all have to be on the bottom. That way uh, the left right arrow it stays correct. And Temujin brought up a good point. So the cards that were exiled slash removed from the game, those actually go into that stack for the uh, items and that stack right there for the artifacts. The reason that matters is because there are cards that will allow you to go digging through the exiles. So technically those two cards they're going to be off camera, but just know that they are in their own decks now, or not at the bottom. I forgot about that. So that was a very good point, very fair point. There you go. No, no, we're going to power through this pretty quick now. So let's take a look. We have uh, three cards, I think, right? Yeah. So we have... Okay, we know what the fear is. Okay. I did it again. All right. So we have a fear. There we go. The trowel and the uh, army knife, and we'll just throw the fear up here because we know what that does. All right. I think that works. Okay. All right. So here we go. Begin anew. And eh, let me grab a drink. Hold on. Again, I just cut off the top of the board. Same with this stuff over here for ease of uh, streaming. So, all right, block it off the jewelry spot. Boom, boom. Check that top row first. There is a jewelry up here. So that will, he'll be blocking this off, which means we're not gonna be able to go after this guardian. 
because that has a jewelry. Uh, jewel, not jewelry, but jewel. There are two spots. Uh, always give uh, preference to the higher up the chain. So boom, done. Okay, our turn. Uh, what the hell do we want to do? We have nothing by way of resources, really. And by really, I mean, no, we really don't. Um, what I'm thinking we do. Yeah, what I'm thinking is we spend the trowel. Uh, we spend, um, we play this card. It gives us a, uh, the ability to spend this compass for a jewel. Then we can move the book over to here and that will get us an assistant. I think that's a pretty good idea for a first turn. No, William, I have not. Oh, actually, that's exactly what Paul just suggested. So there we go. All right, excellent. So we will play this card from our hand. It allows us to spend the exploration. And that gives us a jewel. Boop. Done. Easy enough. Okay. Now, we could not use this card to get the compass because this is not an, a free action. That actually requires us to take an action. Okay. Okay. All right. So, rival turn. Cover up the arrow. The arrow is going to be this one because hierarchy. Unfortunately, there's that. All right, our action, we're going to stay on target. We are going to research our book. Our book will come over here. And this, we have to spend the jewel that we just got there. Boom, done, spent. And that says we get a silver assistant. All right. So what do we want to do? Which assistant do y'all like? Okay. I could make a case probably for the far left or the far right. I'm leaning towards the far right. Um, because discounted purchasing seems really good for me. Um, Daniel, oh, oh, wow, okay. Martha and Daniel say the boat captain, as does Beethoven. Sophocles also. All right, the majority earlier said the boat captain, so we will take the boat captain. All right, and that is draw a card and play a card. Okay. Or discard a card, as it were. All right. All right. So we have, now we have a compass at our disposal at any time or a boat travel. Okay. All right. Done. Rival turn. Y'all enjoying this? Y'all digging this? I'm enjoying this more than I expected. All right, the compass spot. Boop, done. It's the only one. All right, so now what do we want to do? I don't know. We have both of our researchers. We only have access to one compass. Okay, two compasses, which means we can't dig. We can't get more compasses because you just took that. We have access to two compass. which is not three for either of those. So, okay. So what can we do? We can't dig. Oh, we can dig. Sorry, we can dig to get... Uh, we, okay, if we, hmm, hold on. We 
we need an arrow. So here, we need a tablet and an arrow to get up to this spot, which would give us a second assistant. We would need to go one here, and then we could use this to go ahead and grab the tablet. And then as a third action, we could move one of these, well, no, it'd have to be the magnifying glass up here, which would give us another compass, which technically could be a third compass to then be able to, ooh, that could be good. That might not be a bad idea. So I think what we do is we come and dig here. That might work. I like that idea. I say, we, yeah, let's do that. So let's go ahead and dig. So we will spend, we need a boot. So we will pay the fear card, done. These two are in our hands. We will move the assistant over here. That'll get us an arrow. Boom, done. Okay. All right, we're going to research and discard an assistant. And it will be the far left assistant in this case. So whoop, that'll go up there. There's no tile here. And I guess I should point this out also. So you'll notice that some of these spots had tiles. This one says at four players. And then there are others that say three plus or whatever, but playing the solo. So obviously there, okay. All right, so now say goodbye to the draw assistant over there, the far left. That will go away out of the game. Pay a gold and get an arrow. That seems pretty good too. Okay? All right. So that was the assistant or the rival action. So for us now, I think we go ahead and play the army knife. The army knife, we need a tablet. So we're going to grab a tablet. And I think we grab the uh, the compass as the third one. I think so. So we'll grab a compass as, as the second one, sorry. So two different options, so there we go. I think that feels pretty good. I like that idea. Nope, just solo, Drew. All right, so we're done. Back to the rival. And we could always play that at some point, but. All right, round two. Going to discover a level one site. It's going to be the far left edge one and no guardian on this. So the far left edge, whoop, will go there. This will come over here. That is going to be on that one right there. Done, and it's going to be a level one, but no guardian. A couple of compass or a discounted uh, item. And by discounted, I mean free! Regardless of the cost, don't pay it. I believe that's what that is. Let me double check. I think so. That is completely free? Yep. Completely free. It just sounded like the guy from the uh, storage war got, uh, dude. Sorry about that, that's embarrassing. All right. done us. So now I think let's go ahead and research. Now, what can we research? We can only research with this because again, this must stay equal to or ahead of that. And that'll go whoop. I would like to, I mean, but this doesn't really help us. This allowed you to trade a tablet for an arrow or an arrow for a jewel. But we will pay a tablet and an arrow. So those two paid. And, oh no, I miscalculated. No, I didn't, I'm okay. That will get us, sorry. That will get us a compass that allows us to have two compasses. Two compass I, okay. Okay, AI turn. Gonna take the cheapest or the lowest point artifact as it were. 
And the lowest point artifact, if tied, it would be the left one, but lowest point one versus two, so we'll take the guiding stone into their tableau. And what do we have? Pathfinder Sandals. Relocate. Okay. So I'm glad this card came up. Relocate. This means from a place on the board already. Relocate a placed archaeologist to a campsite and activate, uh, activate it. What's a campsite? Well, a campsite are going to be the level zero spots. So they literally have little camps on them, whereas notice these have site spots. So that is how you could then take one of, say that, and move it to there to do that, if you have that. That is the only way to move archeologists that have already been placed on the board. Okay? All right. All right, excellent. So we're up. So now, what do we do? We have one card left. We do have our assistant, so we can discover a site because we have three compass. And that would give us a tablet or, or, ah, this is, oh, I think I like that better. We could discover a site or we could purchase the card that we just said, the Pathfinder Sandals. I really like the idea of doing that. Ooh! So. We could discover here. Uh, hold on. We can only discover, to be clear, here, here, or here. We cannot discover those. Why? Because those require boats. We do not have a boat. We have a car, there, there, or there. So we could discover one of those three. Or we could purchase that or that with the three compass. Ooh, I really like the idea of being able to take essentially an extra action which is going to get us more resources. I think that's going to be more beneficial. We'll be able to do that a couple times this game. I think, I think, yes, Goose Arena, we had the boat captain, but the problem is we need to use him for the third compass, the third compass to be able to discover. And so we can't use it for travel and that it's an either or. Um, yeah, I think we do the boots. Somebody rocking, knocking the boots. So, we will spend one, two, and use him. Three. That'll be three compass. And come here, Pathfinder Sandals. All right. So now that we have done that, let me make sure I get this right. Move it to your play area, and you immediately resolve its effect, but you ignore the tablet cost. All right, just making sure. So, we can relocate a placed uh, archaeologist to a camp and activate it. Okay, don't mind if we do. So, where do we want to move him to? Obviously, I would love to be able to do that. We cannot. Uh, we could do that for a jewel. Oh, now that's an interesting note. If we did this, that would give us the jewel. We have one card left in our hand to be able to spend the jewel to then be able to move up the research here, and that would give us a second assistant. Eric, uh, eBay. Search that on eBay. There you go. It's really good for 18xx and other. Uh, we could get a couple tablets, which would allow us to, to play this again in the future, because that's going to require a tablet. But I kind of like the idea of bumping up our research uh, to be able to get the uh, assistant. I think that's what I'm leaning towards. So let's do that. We do not have to pay uh, the travel cost. We just activate it. Boop. There. But we do have to pay that cost. So that cost 
is going to be, we have to play this card because travel. Uh, sorry, check that. Just discard a card from our hand to our play area per that, and that gets us a jewel. I misspoke. And that is, we purchased the card, so we are done. Okay? All right, excellent. Oh, son of a biscuit. You're right. Hey, Zuteler. I did say that this can only move up to that. Damn it. You're right. This one covers both of those. Damn it. You're right. Uh. Glory to Rome on that. <sighs> Maybe we grab a couple tablets instead. I guess so. So instead of that, we'll go there because we can't move in there. That's not relocating. So instead of that, we will grab a couple tablets. Boo. So if that's the case, we'll go ahead and play this as the anytime or as a free action. Grab the coin. Might as well. All right, so we are completely spent at this point. So now it's just going to be rival, 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 rival. And you're right. The artifact should have grief-filled. What do we have? Crystal earring. I could, I could totally rock that. It's four compasses. Draw up to three cards, keep one. You can return one of them to the top of your deck, the rest into your play area. Okay. It's two points, too. So, eh, eh, eh. Um, oh, wait. We still have a... Oh, we still... Oh, we could... Back that up. We are going to keep that. I forgot I still had my, uh, my, ah, easy there, killer. You're all right. We'll get there. It's okay. It's okay. You're right. I see the error of my way. Well done, peanut gallery. Rival turn. All right. Uh, there is a guardian where they have somebody. Okay. So let's go ahead and hook that one up. All right, they get they get the uh, they get the guardian. So the guardian here is the giant rat. Uh, sorry, giant bat is now been slayed. Now they don't use the any time uh, the free action, so that's just going to be straight up. They have killed the giant bat. Boom, done. So do not do that in lieu of that because that was possible and nothing happens. Don't do it in round five. All right. Now our turn, we do have a archeologist and we have a car, which is better than a boot. Somebody rocking, knocking the boots. Anybody, anybody on that one? Bueller, Bueller, anyone? All right, so here we'll come over. So we paid the movement cost with the Jeep instead of walking, cause <laughs> yeah, and we get the arrowhead. And the reason that matters is that is going to happen next turn. Hot damn, we going Sizzler. Oh, hey, Dan. Dan Halligan, designer, developer, and publisher of Obsession, which uh, if y'all listen to the, the podcast on Tuesday, you're going to hear uh, mine and Tony's very in-depth review of Obsession. Obsession. So, Dan... Well done with that. All right, so rival, here we go. Uh, covering 
for a tablet. Let's see. No, no, and everything else is filled. They're done. Our turn. Let's go ahead and go researching, shall we? So we will. Now we will pay that cost. So that will be those. And you have to make the sound. Bloop. Done. And now we get a second assistant. Woohoo! So this is going to be our last assistant that we choose. This is an important decision. I am of the mind that we take the far left assistant, pay a gold, and get an arrowhead. I think so. So what do y'all think? Well, I sneak a drink of some uh, delicious, tasty tea. I mean, arrowheads are hard to come by, as are jewels, it seems, so... Yeah, I think, I, 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 I think we're in agreement there, so let's go ahead. That'll be our last assistant for the game, so we don't care if they discard anymore. All right. And, unfortunately, we don't have any gold to be able to exchange to be able to use it, because these untap every round, but, alas, we're, we're good with that. <clears throat> so, all right, rival, two actions left. Uh, cover up that, and what do we have left? We have our assistant, and I think that's it. So, We use this card to be able to go to the dig site, so we are truly done. We're not going to be able to use her, unfortunately. Hey, Michelle. Michelle. All right. So we're done. We're just passing at this point, unless you guys think of something that I'm forgetting. And the last action for Le Rival is to take the highest point value item. Highest point value is going to be the tent. Activate a site you uh, occupy. If it's a second level site, you have to pay two compass, but as it is, nope. So, oh, there we go. Sorry about that, wrong button. All right, so these will slide over. And we have an automobo, which says, Take that. As in any time, grab two, uh, grab two compass. Okay. And it's not a main action. And it's a three-pointer. And it's three gold. So there's that. Uh, that is a good point. Sophocles. We, remember, we do have this, which we could draw a card. Um, but we're not going to. Oh, that's actually a really good point. What I should have done, ah, I see that now. We're not going to roll it back, but let me be clear about this. What I should have done, I think, is use this to draw a card before we grab the assistant, because whatever card it is, we could have... Uh, before we research, to use that card for the site travel for that. Which then we could have used the coin for that to be able to give us an arrow. That would have been really good. Well done. Well done. All right. End of the round. Return our workers, shuffle all our cards that are in play, and refresh our assistance. All right, refresh our assistance. Bloop. And we get y'all back. Keep them in the nine yellow area. They kind of blend a bit.
All right, so these get shuffled every day, shuffling. Ah, yep, I see that. That's clever. See, I like that. That kind of reminds me of Mage Knight in a sense, in a, in a small way, how there are some clever ways to manipulate things that might not be seen at first blush, but that you could, if you slow down and take, take your time thinking about it, that you might be able to catch. Um, obviously streaming, I'm going to miss some stuff like that. So well done on, on calling that, but, uh, but yeah, there you go. Good call. I like that. I actually think that's a huge benefit to the game. Just randomly throwing these out there. Okay, there, and just making piles plus shuffling this way. I think that's pretty well shuffled. So let's see. Shuffle all our, put those at the bottom, refresh. Exile the two cards next to the moon staff. Again, these will go into the exile in case that card comes up. Move the moon staff and draw two new. It's important to note this will move all the way to there because that one will go away next time. So then we have Ritual Dagger. Exile a card and grab a arrow as an action. Cost four compass and a coconut flask. I bet you it imparts a little bit of coconut flavor. That'd be delicious. Sign me up. Gain two gold. Use the effect on the silver side of one of your assistants available on the supply board. Of oh, No, no, of one, oh, so one of these. That's kind of cool, I dig that. Yeah, I like that, that's really, really clever. All right, uh, refill the card row, done. Pass starting player, new, draw up to five cards. We have no cards, one, two, three, four, and five, that leaves. Quattro cards left in our deck. So what do we have? That was a crappy draw. Okay. All right. Agree, Dan. And if anybody knows theme, integration to mechanisms, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna defer to you, Dan, on that because I don't know that there's a game that does it better than Obsession. So well done. All right, AI turn, round three. The highest point. Oh, there goes the automobile. Damn it. Damn. We, we move from an automobile to an aeroplane. It says, uh, place a archaeologist with a discount of a plane movement. If discovering a new site, you also have a discount of two compass. And it's worth three points. That's cool. But notice the, uh, the, how much movement it gives you is a couple of uh, aeroplanes, which checks out, right? All right. Right. So what do we want to do? Um... Hmm. What do we want to do? So to move up here, we need two artifacts and an arrow. Two artifacts and an arrow, or two artifacts and an arrow with the gold. I would like to be able to do that twice. But I also like the idea of discovering which would need three compass. We get two here, plus we have those. And that would also give us a second artifact. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, tablet, I mean, instead of artifact, sorry, misspeaking. And then we could use that. Oh, I like that idea. Let's go ahead and grab the two compass first. And we will use a fear card to grab the two compass there. I think that's the right way to do this. Hold.
Hold on, maybe not. Because we technically have three compass already. No, we don't, because it requires, if I want the tablet, and I do, it requires a car. That would be a cup. Nope, we're going to stay on target. We're going to do that. Okay. Ah! Yeah, we have three compass. I understand that. But the problem is it requires a car, and that would be one of our compass. Hmm. And you can't use a boat for a car. Uh, can't use a boat for a car, unfortunately. We could draw a card, but I don't think that would be the best use of our actions on that. Uh, gold's a boat, unfortunately. So that's the problem. See? That's the problem. I think we're okay with that. I think we're okay. All right, we're in round three. Going to discover uh, the bottom row if possible. Damn it! Really? It is the bottom row, right? Gives preferential treatment to the bottom row. Make sure. Yes. Damn it! There goes our tablet. Glory to Rome to you. Ah! Had a one in nine chance that that was going to come up. Son of a... Mm. All right. So this will go... But already has that one, as you can see. So this will flip over and will be worth two points instead. Damn it. All right. So level one comes over. And it gets a guardian as well. That's pretty fancy, a compass and an air. That would have been nice. And that is a giant hippo-esque thing. Requires an arrow to shoot it, and you have to go through the water. All right, there we go. All right, so it's our turn. So we need... Hmm. We'll be able to get tablets here, so I think we go and discover. The Exile, I like that. Because we are sure, uh, uh, we, uh, ah, but the arrow, the arrow we can get there from that. Okay, yeah, I think we're going to go to discover. So, we're going to discover this one. Discover a site. It's going to cost us three compass and a boat. All right. So, we need the arrow. Stay on target. Don't spend the arrow. That there. So, don't spend that. So, here is the boat. Three compass. One, two, and that. Or that could be the boat. And, yeah, that's fine. So that would be three compass there, two, three, and the boat. Okay. So we then put our second archaeologist there. We then immediately can exile a card. Might as well exile fear card. So that we just gained a point out of that and thinned our deck. So that's a good thing. And now <coughs> we have a dig site. Dun, 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 dun. Draw a card, get a gold and a tablet. Hot damn, we go into Sizzler. So tablet and a gold. That seems good. And draw a card. What are we drawing? 
We are drawing a trowel, which allows us to spend a compass for a jewel. I don't know that we're going to need that a whole lot this term, but you know what? It's also a car. So there's that. Okay? All right. But now we need to find out who the guardian will be. That is a giant tiger. Two compass and an arrow. We don't have to do it. Remember, if we don't fight it and defeat it, uh, and it's just going to give us a um, boat movement if we do defeat it. But if we don't, we gain a fear card. So two compass, which currently we only have one compass, just FYI. And we don't have an arrow yet, but we can get one. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. going to take the uh, the tablet location. So the highest that doesn't have that right here that has a tablet. Make sure I'm doing that right. I believe so, but higher row over lower row and then decision arrow from there. So yeah, we're right. Goes there. All right. So our turn, what do we want to do? Now, we can go ahead, oh, that'll give us compass. And compass will give us a jewel. Why do we need to do that? Uh, we don't. That will give us an arrow. Oh, okay. So hold on. So we need two tablets and an arrow to research. Let's do that. We have two tablets. We need an arrow. We'll spend the gold that we have here. That will tap that, which gives us an arrow. Two tablets and an arrow. Oops. Then we move that up there. But ow, there's nothing here, but we do get that, which is one compass. That'll work. Two tablets, an arrow. Can't do that, unfortunately. We have two compass. We need an arrow. So we could use that up there to grab an arrow to defeat that. It's five points. Not a bad idea. Have a good one, Kabuki kid. All right. Have a good one, Daniel. Enjoy dinner. All right. Rivals up. All right, the jewel location. Let's see. Done. All right. Oh, that is so good. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Ah, uh, it's not nearly as sexy as I thought it'd be. So we need two tablets and an arrow. I thought I had it. Hold on one second. So there are three cards left in our deck. So if we were to move the idol up here to grab the two tablets, we need to get an arrow. How can we get an arrow? We could draw a card, but we don't know. I mean, it could be, uh, nope, we only have two fear cards, so, and one of them got exiled, so 
this is going to be either the funding or one of the good, ah, that is such a risk. I don't know. How can we get an arrow? I mean, we could kill that with this, this, and put that up there for the arrow. But I would prefer to move that up there for the two tablets. But then we're an arrow short to be able to move that up, which flips this over, which then would refresh it. And then we could then spend that coin to get an arrow, which would then give us that dead. Oh, we could, we could research with the magnifying glass, which will immediately give us a card draw. Oh, I like that idea. Oh, that, let's do this. I like that. That, that's fun. If nothing else, that's fun. I like that idea. So here we go. We need a tablet and a jewel. That's going to move up here, and that's going to give us two tablets. That is a anytime action, a free action. Then we are going to spend this compass, and as our action, we are going to do this. We're going to play this card, which gives us a jewel. The reason that matters is we're going to then be able to move up here, which will give us a card draw. And we have this as we want as a fallback, as a card draw, plus that'll give us a compass. I love that idea. That is clever, clever, clever. All right. Rival's turn because we did that as our main action. They will hide a spot that gives a compass right here. Our turn, we will research. So we will do this and a card draw. So we need to spend a tablet and the jewel. So there. Wah, wah. All right, not the end of the world, but we also get a compass for that. Okay, and it's six points, so okay. Okay, not the end of the world. So now, what do we need? Ideally, we still need, we need an arrow. So now the question is, do we go ahead and spend that? What do y'all think? Yes or no? Spend it for the card draw or not? And I would also like to point out, we have two coins at our disposal, which could get us the flask, the flask which exiles this card out of the game, gives us three card draws. That will go to the bottom of our deck, which won't help us now, but in future turns. So we need one tablet and an arrow to be able to move that up here to flip that, but we can't do that yet. And it could be boots. It's boots or the army knife, right? Those are the two things that are left. Well, anyway, we have a moment while we think about that. The rival can take its turn because nothing we do is going to, because we've taken our action. So while y'all decide. All right. So is there a guardian? There is a guardian. They're going to kill the guardian. So giant rhino-ish thing. Dead. Dead. 
Okay, done. Our turn. I think we go ahead and do it. Let's do it. We will draw. And we have an army knife. Well, we're going to take the tablet as our one of our two options. So there's that. And what do we want to do for the other? Do we exile the other fear card? We still need an arrow. What else do we choose? I don't know what we do here. No, we can't explore because we don't have any anybody on our board anymore. So we can't do that. I mean, we can get a ton of re ton of resources here, right? Um there are no three gold items. There are only two gold items. And the two is going to be the exile to get draw three cards. That's a four and that's a four. So I, the only other question is compass, 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 which is a three compass option. And the three compass is the coconut flask. Oh, we are one cup. Uh. We are one compass away from getting that damn arrow. Use the effect on the silver side of one of your assistants available on the supply board, which wouldn't really help us. Damn it. Is there a way to get a compass that I'm not seeing? I don't think so. Oh, that's brutal to be one compass short from being able to buy it. Ah, the coconut flask also gives us two coins, doesn't it? Which then allows us to buy the aeroplane. Oh. I, might, I mean, it's not ideal for this turn, but we could. So we go from having zero fear cards to two fear cards in our deck. Is it worth it for that and the airplane? And it's three points. Oh, that's tough. Brutal decisions here. Really brutal. Ah, oh. I like that. Let's do it. Okay. So we're going to buy the coconut flask, which is three uh, compass. So we have one on our board. We're going to spend that as a second. And Oh, wait. Da -da -da -da. I'm getting ahead of myself. The second option, because we're playing this card as our turn, is going to be to get a compass. Yeah, I like that. So we did the army knife. That's done. We'll stop there. All right. Rival's turn. Oh, there are so many good decisions in this. Uh, buy the cheapest item. Lowest point. And the one pointing to the right between those two is going to be the pack donkey. Donkey. Done. That will come over. Oh, more options. Oh, what do we have? Precision compass costs four coins. Buy an uh, buy a artifact with a discount of three compasses, including the top card of the artifact deck. Oh my. Oh my.
I think we're still going to be one compass short. Oh, that was artifact, not item. Oh, damn it. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I got excited. I'm going to bury that one then. Never mind. Oop, wrong order. Ah. Thanks for the correction. So, we'll shuffle that back up in there. Yep. Okay. So, it will be the lower point, and that was pointing to the right, so I'm going to take that one. I apologize. But, still might help us. What do we have? Say three compass, ancient wine, get a coin, use the effect on the gold side of one of the available, which is going to be a discount of two on the supply board. So exile a card, get a compass, or get a coin and a compass, and we'll see how that works out. All right. Our turn. We're going to purchase an artifact. So that's going to be Yeah. One, two, three to purchase the artifact. And we can either purchase the left one or the right one. Silver side or gold side. We have access to two gold right now. Oh, okay, so let's look at the assistance now. So the silver side is a compass or a compass and a gold for the gold, right? We're not worried about travel with that. Exile or I exile with a compass or a discount of one or a discount of two on everything. So if we were to do the gold side on this one, it would be a discount or two and it would give us two. So that would potentially let us purchase four. And we could buy the pack donkey or the airplane. I like that. Take the ancient wine and get the gold side of that. I like that. Yep. All right. So we will purchase this one, the ancient wine. The ancient wine says we get a coin. And immediately, this will go into our plate area. Use the effect on the gold side of one of the available. So we'll get a gold and a compass. There, done. So we purchased, and then we immediately refill. Passage shell, uh, reload, or I'm not sorry, uh, from your player board, move onto a campsite for free. You can activate it twice instead of once. Oh, oh, where was that? Because that would give us two arrows. Oh, that's so gross. All right. Okay, Rival's turn. 
All right, going to research and discard, and it's going to discard the far left. And the research, I believe it will move to the left side, is what that means. Yep, to the left side. So we'll move to here, and that goes out of the game. And we'll discard also that assistant that we just used. Boom, done, out of the game. All right, our turn. We're going to purchase a card. I think we purchased the airplane. I think so. So that's going to be four coins. And the airplane. It's three points as well. All right. Oh, from the tallest stack, good call. You're right, hold on, that will stay there. Tallest stack, you're right, it will be that one that goes away. Thank you. Tell me, Jen. I mean, we could do the donkey, which gives us a couple draws, but the problem is one point versus three points. Uh, I don't know, what do y'all think? Here, yeah, y'all choose. Obviously, I'm having a hard time with this, so. They're both going to be four, so. One point, three point, and you can read the, y'all choose. It's close between, but we're going to go airplane. That will go to the bottom of our deck. So we're definitely going to get it next turn. Uh, that's it. All right. Rival turn. Oh. And that's going to be a hat. Immediately get a compass and a gold coin. On the aerospace, the highest, no, right there. And I think we pass, and we're not going to keep this in our hands, so that will just go there. Because we have two tablets and a compass, and there's nothing that we can use for that. All right. And last action is going to be not going to bother because it just covers that up. So we are then going to here. We did not defeat it, so we gain a fear card there because we did not defeat that. All right. Shuffle the tiles. And these get shuffled.
draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Moon stat, so these two get exiled. Penultimate round. And we have a couple of artifacts. Those will slide over. An obsidian earring. Draw up to two cards from the bottom of your deck. Keep one and discard the other into play. And just defeat a guardian. The end. It's a war club. It's a badass club. All right. All right, Rival's turn. Here we go. And this can actually be moved over here now because that's done. All right, here we go. I think that's it, right? I didn't forget anything. Yeah. All right. Highest tablet. Highest tablet will go there. Done. So we're not defeating the baddie. What do we have? All right. Okay. That's going to be nice, but we need a tablet to do it, so it allows us to do two of these. Or go out somewhere and then move down here. So there's that. However, this also requires a tablet, but could give us two compass and a gold or a gold and a compass, or a discount of two of something. Okay. This one is placed with a discount of an airplane. If discovering a new site, also have a discount of two compass. So one of these, so an airplane would cover, let me make sure I get this right. So we need four compass to discover one of those. Oh, and these untap, sorry. One, two, three, four. I see how we can do it. So what we could do is we could go, say, here to get the arrow. Then we can move this up, which would give us a compass. That's two compass. And we could use that. That's three compass. That's four compass. And then when... It's three compass, sorry. And then this will flip over and reseed, and that'll give us a coin and a compass. But if we're going to do that, I mean, we might as well come up here and get a compass and that, right? And that takes a car, which is that. I think that's what we do for our first turn. Or I guess we could use that for that, and then, oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. And then that saves us an action, and saves us a, yeah, I like that. So we don't have any coins, so we'll use this for the coin to then use that assistant. That gives us an arrow. Then we have an arrow and two tablets to move up here. And that will then allow us to flip 
one assist into the gold side. And we choose to do this one. When we do, that refreshes that assistant. There. I like that. Oh, shoot. Well, I'm okay with that, actually. I'm okay with that. I think we're either we either we're going to have to do that or do that. I'm okay with that. Rivals turn. It's not going to be a perfect play, y'all. All right, one with money. That's taken, and that will go there. It's our turn. problem with digging right now with this nope it's okay where was it we're going to overpay for that with a boat to move this to go dig for the two tablets again it's not going to be perfect I think doing it in the other direction would have been better, but so be it. So there's that. And we're done. Rival's turn. Oh, that hurt. That hurt. Did it? No, I didn't. Okay, phew. That will go there to that. So now... We have potentially one, two, three, four, and that. We're going to spend a tablet to use the ancient wine. The ancient wine is going to get us a gold and a gold side on an available assistant. And that is going to be... Where was it? Hold on. Yep. Yeah. We're going to use him to get a purchase of an artifact for two less on the gold side right there. That plus that compass is going to purchase the passage shell. This goes into our play area, and we get it for free. Take, oh, uh, I, nope, oh, that won't work. That would get us four compass, but the problem is we then don't have that. Ah, it doesn't work, hold on. Damn it, it damn it, damn it, damn it, because we have to have it from here. Damn it. Damn it. Mm. So, looking at the assistance, the other option is to just get two compass on the gold side there. I think that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to get the two compass. That's a bummer, but so be it. That's okay. So that is now done. Hit rival's turn. 
That's an artifact, the lowest point value, and that'll be on the far left one. So that one. So there goes the war club. Sundial, couple tablets or pass to gain a jewel. Okay. So our turn now, we will spend a tablet to play the aeroplane. Yep. So we are going to place with a discount of an aeroplane. If discovering a new site, you have a discount of two. Well, to go up to the top side, we need to come up with four compass and a travel. Unfortunately, we're going to have to use the Pathfinder to be able to do that. Oh, you're right. Give me that tablet back. So, unfortunately, though, we have to use that because for travel. Or two coins. We don't have the coins, so we have to do that. Okay. So now, which site do we want to discover? We could exile a card, grab a tablet, we could... Oh, and for the fourth here, we're going to have to tap that. So that's one, two, three, and four. So now the question is, which one? We can go to any of the four spots up top. That's actually a good point. Yeah, refresh and assistant is the last one. We could get to essentially two arrowheads. That's true. At least one, for sure. Well, here's the other thing. If we were to get the tablet, we could get the jewel here and then refresh him and flip that to the other side. That might not be a bad idea, and that gets us another uh, compass. I think that's the better idea. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We'll use our coin to get a, je a jewel. And that uses her. Then we will come up there and get, oh, hell, we don't even need that. Oh, actually, hold on. Maybe we get the refresh. But we don't have any coins. We don't have any... No, I think we take the tablet still. That'll give us a second tablet. So we're going to take both of these. They have spots, but that's seven points, unless we desperately need to use them. So now, hey, we get a level two up there. An arrowhead and a gem, that seems not terrible. All right, but now, Guardian. Two coins and an arrowhead. Okay. We don't have the coins, but we have the arrowhead. I 
That could be tricky. Okay, we'll figure that out. We're done for this turn. This is round four, gonna be a level four, gonna be on the far right edge. So these, so that will go there and that will go there. Sorry. And this is level four, so no guardian. Okay, we're up. There was a coin on our tableau, but we used it to activate there. So, okay, so for our main action, we're going to research, and what do we do? I think we come straight up, or do we come over to this? And no, we're going to come right here, and that's going to get cost us a tablet and a jewel. And that's going to get us a refresh flipping to the other side. There. And then we'll get a coin and a compass immediately. So, now we need a coin and a jewel to move up to here, which will get us a compass. So let's see, a coin and a jewel will get us up to there. And then we need two tablets and an arrowhead to get us to there, which would then get us a tablet back, and a card draw, which could be a coin, which the coin could then be here, but we would need our arrow. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think we're done there because we've done our main action there. So rivals up. Going on to where there's a jewel. Right there. So I think we research. I think so. Unless somebody has a big complaint, I think we research going to there, which will be the coin and the jewel. And that gets us a compass. And I think we stop there. Well, to kill the guardian, we need two coins. Oh, I see what you're saying instead of researching. I guess we could. That way we don't get the... All right, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. There. So we'll spend an idol. That'll get us a coin and a compass. And instead of researching, we'll go ahead and kill the idol, which is going to be two coins and an arrowhead. So do we bribe it, I guess, and then shoot it? Thematically, I'm trying to figure out how the coins come into play, but he did. There. So that's spent. That gives us movement, but eh, it saves us a fear card. All right, I'm fine with that. 
All right, they research and then kill a or uh, an assistant, not kill them, but there's that. And the highest stack, they're both three each, gets rid of this one. So that one will go away, revealing that. Okay, so back to us. I think we're done then because I don't want to have to spend this on something that's not going to help us right now. So I think we're done. Hey, Serbia in the house. What's up, Mirren? All right, so I think that's it. Let's just go ahead and I think we pass at this point. So they're going to take the highest point item, and it's going to be the one on the left. Donkey? Chronometer. Uh, pass the game three. Eh, whatever. Yeah. Don't care because we're done. And that one will kill a guardian. And they can. They will kill that guardian. And done. All right. End of the round. We get that back. We get that back. And final shuffle for him. Or them. Okay. We will shuffle these. Those go to the bottom. One, two, three, four, five. Refresh our gold assistance. Woohoo! Uh, all right, so gone, gone. Uh, so artifacts now, these will slide over. Feel like we're getting smoked, by the way. Star charts, pay a coin to activate any two different campsites. That seems tasty. Discard a card to untap both of your assistants. Also, not terrible. I'm not finding the assistants as sexy, uh, like action-wise. Like, eh, eh. All right, here we go. Final, final round. Let's roll. Rivals up. They're going to research and get rid of an assistant. So they will go to the left side. This one dies there. And that assistant will go away. And coins. All right. So we're up. Let's take a look at our cards. Okay. There. All right. All righty. And we have some movement right there, right? Okay. So what do we have? An arrow and a jewel is kind of tasty up there. So that's a boat. Oh God. Really? We only have one boat? Uh, I guess technically we have, so we would have to spend both of those cards to go up there for the arrow and the jewel. I'm just looking to be able to move up.
Oof. I don't know that that's worth that, honestly. Um, I'm just trying to figure out a way to get our research all the way up. So you know what? Let's make a little list. What do we need? There it is. So what do we need? We need a coin. Uh, one or two jewels. And then one or two arrows. And then three tablets. So it's going to be two or three jewels, actually, and a compass. So it'll be two or three coins. So we have the compass. We need two tablets, an arrow and a jewel. Maybe it is worth it. I think we have to go up there to do that. Oh, right, the captain. Too oh, I'm an idiot. All right, let's do that. That's first and foremost. Thank you. Captain, two boats. Thank you. There. So that's going to be an arrow and a jewel. So we have jewel jewel, arrow. We don't have a coin yet, so we need a coin and two tablets. Two coins, two tablets, and a jewel. Two coins, one, two, we have the compass. One, two, three jewels, so we need one jewel and two tablets. Two coins, two tablets, and a jewel. We can get the jewel there. Yeah! Oh, we're in good shape. Cool. Nope. I'm happy with that. Reason I don't want to do that and do that instead is I can get two tablets here with the fear card. So yeah, I like that. All right. All right, they will take the lowest point tablet uh, artifact. One, 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 farthest to the right, be the passage shell. Done. A guiding skull. Pay a compass to reveal the top uh, level two in the stack. Activate. Eh, nice. But staying on target. Okay. So now we need two coins, two tablets, and a jewel. We need a bunch of coins. So we can get a coin there and a coin there. That's the two coins. We can get the two tablets there. And a jewel is right there. There it is. So now it's time to race. Here we go. So we're going to research. So we will research here first. There. That'll get us a compass. And that'll cost us uh, a coin and a jewel. Okay. So there. It'll cost us that coin and that jewel. Done. Done. Rival turn. Go on to the highest level artifact. Uh, I'm sorry, um, tablet. That'll be up there. So be it. Next, <coughs> we need tablets. Which, yo dog, that'll get us tablets up there too. So, two tablets here. So for our turn, we will use the fear card, which is a boot, 
to then come over here, which will get us two tablets. Done. Rival turn. Highest arrow. Highest arrow here or here, and it'll be the one to the left. So that'll go there. Our turn. We want to move up there. So that's going to be two tablets and an arrow. Two tablets, but we're going to get one of them back, so I'm not going to bother. And an arrow. We get this tablet back there, and we get to draw a card per that. So drawing the card, eh. And we're done. The guardian draw is dead. That, that's spent already. The, we have a car for the guardian that we have. All right, so rival. This is round five, does nothing. All right, done, our turn. Want to move up to here. So that's a tablet and a jewel. Whoop. A tablet and a jewel. That will get us a compass. It's four compass, just saying for something up there. Maybe, we'll see. All right. But we need a coin, a compass, and a jewel. A coin, a compass, and a jewel. And another compass. So we actually can actually purchase one of the fours next turn if we want. So keep that in mind. Okay? Cool. All right, rival's turn. Highest coin, and that'll be right there. All right, so our turn. Let's take a look at those cards up top, now that we have a lead on him, because the rival will go there. So we have four compass that we'll be able to spend, so I'm not worried about that. So what do we have up here? Let's see. Pay one compass to reveal the top, activate it, put it to the bottom. Eh. Discard a card to untap both of those. Uh, both one point. Okay. Pay a coin to activate any two different campsites. That just resources at this point. And I don't think since both of our, both of our, uh, archaeologists are out there, I don't think so. Two tablets are, eh. Drop the two cards from the bottom of your deck. Keep one, discard the other. That potentially, that actually might help us. So do any of y'all like any of those? Anything that's super sexy to y'all? What do you think? So let's make sure I, because if I could do that, that actually might be the best, that one. But let's see, I can make sure I can afford to do it. That's one, two compass. That gives me six. We need a coin and a jewel. So, spending this for that gives the jewel, and we need a coin. Yeah, we can do it. So we need five, we can. Yeah, I pay the coin to different, yeah, I know, but these really aren't that great for us, for what we're trying to do. I guess we could get a two-point tile potentially, for one of the uh, temples. But, meh. No, I hear you. But activating, how does that help us, is what I'm saying. I mean, we could activate those two, which would get us that, right? Yeah. Or we could activate that for the jewel. Yeah, 
Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I think that one makes the most sense. I think so. We get to do whatever's on it. Like, I like that idea. But, here's the thing. In case it has something that helps us with the guardian, I think we wait. I think instead we go up to the temple. So if we go up to the temple, what we're going to do is we'll activate the trowel, which will spend this to get us a jewel, which we need a jewel, a compass, and a coin. Next term, we can do that. I think that's what we do. Because that's going to have to happen to be able to advance that up. I, I like that idea. Rival's turn. Take the highest point uh, tool, which, well, there's only one tool. That will go there, and that is a fishing rod. Buy a tool with a discount of three, including the top card of the deck. I mean, that's also an option because that's two points there. That goes back to that to activate, which would give us two coins, right? So back to us. We will activate the army knife. The army knife is going to be a coin for sure. So now we have everything that we need for the temple right there. So now the question is, what do we do with the second one? The other thing to keep in mind, I mean, we could get rid of a minus one card, right? Get rid of the fear card. Exile it. I think that, yeah. Well, hold on. Here, we need the, uh, the compass to be able to get a fourth up there. I think it has to be the compass to be able to grab one of those because that's going to offset the fear plus it will give us something else. So yeah, that, it has to be the GPS or the compass. Done. Rival's turn. All right, round five, do nothing. Done. All right, so now I think what we do, because I forgot about these, is let's go ahead and hit that 23-point spot. Boom. So we have to pay that, that, and that. If nothing else, that feels damn good that we were able to do that. Good job, team. Now we get to look at both of these and choose one. A tablet or exile? Well, not a clear-cut decision, and here's why. We're here. We need a jewel and a coin. and an arrow. Okay, so hold on. If we were to purchase that one later, that would give us an arrow and two coins. We need a coin and a jewel. We could then put that up there. I'm not saying I'm this, or better yet, we'll spend one of the coins for the jewel and the other coin for this. That gets us up to here, which gets us three compasses. Then we have another tablet here plus the tablet we have, and we will have gotten the arrow from that to get us to here, which then gives us another one of those. We are not going to exile. We are going to take the tablet right there. We'll take the tablet. That was... Here, we're done. Rival's turn. Oh, this is exciting. Going to take the highest jewel spot. That'll be right here. Our turn. We're going to purchase 
these four. These four are going to be to purchase the star charts. The star charts go into our discard. Oh, hell, we need a coin. I missed that step. I hate to do it, but there, that's going to be a coin and a compass. Ouch. But I think it works out. I hope so. So we have to pay the coin to activate two different campsites. We're going to activate the arrows and the two coins. Or the arrow, yeah. There. So we got this. That will go over. If nothing else, we're doing stuff. Ornate Hammer. Exile the rightmost uh, um, tool. Gain any tool from exile. And there you go. That's why we have the exile deck. All right. Game's turn. Highest uh, here. Our turn. We will go here. That's a coin and a jewel. We have one coin, and then we're going to spend one coin here for a jewel. So there's the coin and a jewel. So that moves this up to here, which will give us three compass. He's done. They're done. We're all done. So now we have, that will go here, that will be two tablets and an arrow, two tablets and an arrow, and that allows us to get for free any one artifact. All right, so the artifact for free. None of the exile cards really work really great for that. That one, however, is kind of tasty. Um, we have four we have four compass right now, so we'll be able to potentially purchase two of those. Use the coin for the assistant. Get the jewel and get the 11 points. Um, could I have? Okay, correct me. If, hold on. Correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe maybe I'm mis misunderstanding that, but if so, don't you have to buy the first level, then the second level, then the third level? If not... Oh, no. Oh, I stand corrected. I misunderstood this. If you can pay that that and that, you can take the 11 point tile. Oh, well, let's back that up. Okay. I misunderstood. I thought you had to buy the first level. Okay. So that's going to be, we get those back. Okay. That'll become the jewel instead. How do I get the coin? What am I missing? All 
Oh, so let's back that down too. So that's a coin and a jewel back. And back that up, because that would have been there. Okay. So this is a coin, two tablets, the jewel, that, and now we use this to get an arrow. And that, folks, is everything. So that will be that. Okay. You're right. That's better. So it's our turn. We have three compass left. And we could buy that for a point for two compass. And either grab two tablets or jewel. And I don't think it matters either way, does it? Oh, you're right. You're right. I don't have it because of that. Good call. Mm. Hold on. But I backed it up. Then I wouldn't have had that either, which means I wouldn't have gotten the star charts. Oh, no. That was the very last thing. No, we're good. We're good. I don't have that. We're done. That's it. You're right. Yep. Thank you. That was for this step right there. All right. We're done. Nothing else matters, so we go into final scoring. Thank you. My bad. Whoo. All right. So final scoring. Sheesh. That was a little chaotic there at the end. A little frenetic. I apologize. But I'm having fun. Hopefully you all are enjoying it as well. All right. So final scoring. Here we go. Each of your research tokens score is based on its row. Magnifying glass, right, obviously, right? Okay. All right. We're going to get 23 and 4 for 27. He gets 12. 27 to 12. Okay, good. Next, temple tiles. 11 to nothing. And then the rival is going to get 3, 6, 9. And there are two of those at 4 apiece. Uh, 2 apiece, sorry. So 2, 4, and 9 is 13. We will get 3, 6, 9, 12, because we covered all those up. We don't get those as well, so it's just 12. And then we get 5. And he gets 15. And then for artifacts, let's see, what does he get? Artifacts and tools, so these. This hurts. Two, three, four, five, seven, ten, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen. Oh, I do have two guardians. I forgot about that one, even though I didn't use it. You're right. So he got 17, we have 10 for that. Good call, thank you. And let's take a look at our deck. 
we have two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, nine, and we like it. He has none of those. We have two of them. All right. Here we go. So he's looking at 25, 40, 57. We're at, uh, what do we got? That's 17, 29, 40, 67. Provided I counted that right. Right? 38, 38, 50, 60, 9, 60. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well done, Team Herd. Well done. Uh, all right. So some thoughts to start here. I was 100% meh coming into it. I really was not terribly looking forward to it. I thought it was just going to be a typical exploration resource convert bleh, game. Now, I will say the theme totally pasted on whatever. I mean, it carries through the whole game, but... It, no, all I was doing was converting resources. I wasn't thinking about going through a jungle and whatever. But I will say, the game surprised me in a positive way that I thought this did, outside of the theme being pasted on, I think the game did a really, really good job of being compelling and being interesting and being difficult. And remember, you can scale the difficulty. Remember, we only had two of the five uh, red tiles. We could do three, four, or five of the red tiles instead of the green ones. And that makes it a more difficult game. They score higher points. They get more points, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I thought this was really good. I would, I, I'm shocked. I'm legitimately surprised at how much I really enjoyed this. I thought there was no way in hell we were going to be able to run up the research track and ended up really, really enjoying that. The one thing I will say on the negative was it seems, and I think the peanut gallery will back this up, that you either focus on research track or for focus on discovering. Because I like the, the exploration part of it. It's, ooh, what's around the next corner? What's around the next tile flip? And I think we did that twice. And that's really exciting, so we didn't get to do that a lot. So that was kind of a bummer. But outside of that, really enjoyed that. Um, the other thing, so out of all the research cards, we didn't get to any of these. I mean, we had a lot of research, or uh, sorry, artifact cards that we didn't get to. We didn't get to the majority of the items. I mean, these are huge decks and I don't know if they repeat. Doesn't look like they do. And there's a dog. It's not a Greyhound, but yeah, no, none of them repeat. They're, they're all uh, different artwork. So that's cool. That's nice. But yeah, I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed the solo play of this. The AI is stupid simple to run once you get going. Really, really good. And stupid simple being, it, meaning it's, it's very quick and, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of time juggling the AI, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want from a bot in a solo game. Uh, oh, and yeah, I didn't mention this, but there's the snake side of the board, which uh, modifies a couple of the rules a little bit. I mean, there's no reason we can't stream this again if there's demand to go ahead and do a stream on the snake side and up the difficulty and just make the pain come strong. But yeah, yeah, overall, thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I think they did a really good job of both developing the AI as well as making the gameplay compelling. 
The theme, meh, whatever. Uh, but outside of that, that was a really, really good way to spend an afternoon, I think. So uh, apparently it plays really well at two player, I'm seeing. No, you get points whether you flip the Guardian or not. Uh, it's just the bonus whether or not um, that you use. Or I just never used it, so it didn't need it. And apparently it scales well. So would I play this two-player? Sure. Uh, if something Jess or someone else wants to play, yeah, then yeah. Yep. And... This is no Mage Knight. Let's be clear on that. However, I will say that that whole, and I mentioned this earlier during, during the gameplay, but in case anybody's just chiming in for the, for the final thoughts, that the way you can manipulate cards and actions and tiles and chain things together in ways that you wouldn't normally think of is reminiscent of that aspect in Mage Knight, and I think that is a that is a really smart thing to in, uh, to to include in the game in the way it works. So that was really well done, really well. So yeah, there you go. There you go. All right, that's it. That's it for the week. Call it a wrap. So thank you everybody that hung out. Hopefully everybody that watched enjoyed it, and, and now you can play the game solo. I think seeing that is, you saw pretty much everything this game has to offer, and I would like to play this again. So if y'all want to see me play this again on the snake side, then comment down below after the stream's over. Other than that, like, subscribe, support the show over on patreon.com forward slash HCHQ. Definitely appreciate the support. That's it. I will, Jess and I will be back tomorrow with the weekly look ahead. A lot of multiplayer stuff coming up this week, uh, including a playthrough of Stationfall. So keep that in mind and a whole bunch of other stuff. The next episode of the podcast, uh, our review of Obsession will drop on Tuesday. That's it. Wear your mask, social distance. Be kind to one another. And I will see you all next week. Thank you, everybody. Certainly appreciate it. Have a good night. Enjoy your Sunday. Take care, everybody. Woohoo! Victory! And I really thought we were going to get smoked on that. Well done, everybody. <laughs>